So yes. as an economist, do you see any uh, business or economic models that are particularly well suited as the next billion people come online? So some of the things I've been really excited about in the last year or two in terms of new startups are startups that have figured out how to take underutilized resources and put them to better use. Economists, economics as a subject is about efficient utilization of scarce resources. So nothing makes us more excited than seeing underutilized resources, be they cabs or, or cars that are now used um, by Uber, instead of sitting on a corner, now they're taking passengers, whether it's rooms being used by Airbnb, whether it's people with extra time being able to provide valuable services through TaskRabbit. Um, my children take a, take a, a writing, creative writing course over Skype, um, and you can get language tutoring from all over the world over, through Skype-based marketplaces. So those types of markets are really exciting. As we think about, though, the next set of people coming online, we're getting people from poorer countries, from developing countries, people without banking and without good ways to get paid. I can't just on my own hire a language tutor from China and have an easy way to pay them. And if you, if you don't have banking, it's very difficult for you to operate an internet business or sell things. And so one of the things that's, that we, we might look towards the future is ways to get this next set of people to be able to participate in the global economy. And so one of the things I think that is very exciting about Bitcoin for a lot of us is it's a global payment mechanism which would seem to address some of the, uh, putting aside the store of value part, which is, which is another discussion. Um, do, you, do you see Bitcoin or other digital payment mechanisms uh, addressing the problem that you're talking about and, and actually are using them, actually coming into currency? That's right. So just in the last uh, eight or nine months, I've started doing research on vir virtual currencies um, for precisely that reason. You know, if I want to send you money the same day in the United States, if I want to get it to you by the end of the day, I still might be socked with a 20 or $25 fee. We've got middlemen in there. We've got market power by banks. We've got poor people going to other countries and working 80 or 90 hours a week to send money to feed their families. But a big chunk of that is going to Western Union or other remittance countries. And again, you know, there's no good way to get people integrated in the global economy in the unbanked sector. So I'm, I'm very excited about these new types of currencies as a way to both put pressure on existing systems to lower their fees and to become more efficient, as well as a way to, to move money around.